Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, sorry for that uh, today. Uh, the setup issue. So we uh, delay a bit. Uh. But I have a uh, questions for all of you. Uh, uh as I, I think I mentioned previously, uh, the uh, previously Google Suite uh, did not. Uh, I mean, previously Google Suite. Uh, I mean, if we purchase Google account, uh, so all the all the uh, account are entitled for unlimited storage. But for now, uh, Google Suite did not allow for uh, I mean, an, uh, unlimited storage anymore, which means each subscription is capped at hundred TB. If not mistaken, huh? Yes. So 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 uh, because we receive uh, for each and every class, uh, I will do the recording, right? So uh, recording is the main things that uh, occupy most of the spaces, uh, Because all those uh, tutorial, those would be fine, uh, Just that the uh, recording, uh, Because I, I think I did not share you all the recording, uh, So uh, eventually the recording, I think is somehow useless or so, uh. So maybe for the subsequent, subsequent uh, classes, uh, I will not do any recording, uh. So uh, is it okay from your end uh, or you have, because from the last semester, uh, some students uh, would request for the recording for uh, lecture class only. So I'm not sure if you have this concern. If let's say you have, I mean, you want to have the uh, recording for lecture class only. Uh, so I will just let, uh, record for the lecture class. Uh. But, but actually in conventional method, uh, I mean, when we are face to face, there's no recording, right? So. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, did you already listen to the recording? Even I myself, I I don't really into recording uh, Okay, so uh, I think if you all are um, not going to use this uh, and perhaps we will not record anymore. Uh, okay, for the subsequent classes, we are not going to record. Maybe for the subsequent classes, uh, I will not going to record for tutorial and also uh, practical class uh, because especially for practical. Uh, after explaining everything, uh, actually, it's your time to do your things. Uh. So the recording is going to run over there like another one hour or two hours. So just waste of space. Uh. So perhaps I will just record for the uh, record for the uh, lectures only. Uh. Okay. So for today, I will not do any recording. Uh. So yeah. Okay. I think we already finished for uh, tutorial two, right? The last time we finish the last question for tutorial two. So, I will, uh, and I forgot to upload the uh, solution for tutorial two, I will upload later on. So today we will start out with the tutorial three. And if in case we did it uh, very fast, uh, so we will continue for tutorial four. So let me share my screen first. Okay, so uh, this is tutorial three. If you if you have any technical issue, I mean any humming issue, let me know for those online or no 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 volume or whatsoever. Please let me know. So um yeah, determine the wavelength of the peak power for a. Uh, okay, maybe I should tutorial. Wait. Okay, determine the wavelength of a peak power for uh, sunset and also blue sky light. Uh, but that for, for sure, uh, this kind of question will not appear in your examinations. Uh. Okay, uh, this is a bit 
VAC uh, or qualitative in nature. So basically, you just need to identify the visible wavelength of the of the uh, light uh, from red, green, and blue, and then from there you will uh, get the wavelength. Uh. Basically, this one is in, in your lecture notes as well. Uh. Uh, red sunset is actually referring to red, and blue skylight is actually referring to blue. Uh, okay, so um, this one, I don't think we need a uh, discussion on this. So the wavelength of peak power for red for a red sunset is six hundred and thirty uh, nanometer and blue sky light is 450. Uh, but some things is very interesting regarding the wavelength. Um, since we are still okay, uh, sometimes, um, this is uh, one, of the, one of the things that I, uh, I've, been, I've been through last time uh, during working um, uh, in the machine vision company. Uh. So we need to penetrate, we need to use sort of a, uh, any any light source uh, because the light source you know the light source is going to in machine vision company uh, we are actually portraying some sort of the light source here and then this is the semiconductor uh, tap and reel uh, what we call tap and reel because this is sort of uh, a silicon tape uh, okay so your semicon but uh, die is inside this each and every pocket uh. so let's say this is one pocket uh, this is another pocket. So this is your light source, okay? So perhaps this is your camera and lens. Somewhere around here. Okay, so this is a, your build up and uh, of entire uh, uh, light uh, uh, capturing station. Uh. So the we have for, for the tech and real, uh, uh, we are actually doing packaging, you know, like when you buy something like, like the meat from the frozen uh, storage. So that would be a, uh, I mean, transparent seal outside, right? So the same thing here, on top of this semiconductor unit, you have a transparent uh, seal. So this transparent seal is tend to be very reflective, uh, okay? So I have, uh, I have difficulties in uh, selecting the light source, which can penetrate to the seal and able to uh, check is the code on the surface of dye in this pocket. So that is uh, why, uh, because most of the time when we deal with the light source, we are actually using red color light source or blue color light source, that's all. In, uh, we don't have any green color light source uh, uh, for the uh, image processing, especially when you build up with the non-destructive testing and evaluations. So you have only red color and also uh, blue color. And red color is especially uh, significance when you want to examine something which is on the surface. Uh, I mean, like the, uh, like the 2D code and et cetera. But for light, a blue color like source, it is more obvious for those soft, soft, uh, soft wording. Uh, actually, it depends on how the molding or how the crafting of the 2D, uh, or, the, or the wording on the 2D dial, okay? So the reason why I choose blue color is that actually you have to play around with the wavelength because the longer the wavelength, the penetration power is higher. So for example, uh, let's say you have a, yeah, the most obvious case is that whenever you go to hospital, you have a CT room, you have the MRI room or the X-ray room. Whenever, uh, for example, you go to the CT room, right, you have sort of shell to wear off, okay? Uh, and also for X-ray as well. So you have a specific uh, attire for you to wear like, for those that inside, or for example, the nurse and etc. So those shelves is actually protecting you from the ray, okay? And also the uh, radioactive ray, gamma ray, they are quite, they are penetrating the soft thin wall. Like. So basically the MRI room, the wall is special, which is uh, quite thick and it depends on the wavelength of the ray as well. So the wavelength here will affect the way uh, the, the color reflected. Okay, what I want to highlight here is that uh, red color, blue color, and green color, and also out, uh, others, for example, gamma or ultraviolet, is actually dealing with different wavelengths. And this wavelength could be used to identify a specific uh, 
to review a specific object. Um, so to some extent, uh, of course, uh, I think I did not include this in the slippers. Perhaps it's a good idea to include this one, to study the wavelength. Yeah, maybe next semester. Okay, make sure you don't repeat my course. Uh. So figure one shows the, uh, for the second tutorial question, uh, but just now, uh, that one is just extra hunting. Okay, not in the syllabus as well. Uh, figure one shows this uh, spectral power distribution of an LED light source. Determine the color of the light emitted from the LED. So, um, this is the original, one moment. Okay, so this is the original um, question. So basically, um, just to describe it, so anyone want to share the answer? Mm, let me check uh, this one, describe. Oh, da, 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 da. I think this one is very simple, huh? Uh, no, 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 this one, I do it. Okay. So basically, uh, you have your different wavelengths. Uh, always remember to check the X and Y exit. Uh. What is the X and Y exit? Okay. Because sometimes, uh, especially in histogram, uh, X and Y exit could be uh, number of pixel or maybe zero to two five five, or maybe the intensity it depends on the uh, what is the uh, legend over there. So this is wavelength, uh, which means starting from three hundred eighty until seven hundred eighty. So the relative ra radiance would be zero to one, uh, which is being normalized. Uh. Okay. So you have this is actually according to the lecture notes as well, uh. So which means your blue color is somewhere around here, uh, your your green color is somewhere around here, and the red color is around, I think it's around 600 and yeah, over 630. Blue, blue, blue color is 450. Okay, uh, this is just for your information. Uh, I don't think you need to memorize the wavelength for red, green, and blue. Okay, don't worry about that. So the color of LED uh, light emit are red, green, and blue, which is mixed spectrum. So the LED is now displaying the red color. Why is red color? Because the intensity of red is uh, highest. Okay. Uh, some this is some uh, this is some part of the uh, information we can retrieve from uh, this kind of histogram. Of course, uh, 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 why it, since it is displayed blue, green, and red color, why it is not white color because everything, all the color are, are present over there. Is that the proportion is different uh, because when you have uh, red color, for example, in RGB value, uh, if you have red color is uh, two hundred, uh, blue color is hundred and a green color is 100, uh, so which means your red color is like, uh, I mean, the color appear will be red color because the intensity is highest. Uh, and then the rest of it, which means because it's 100, right? So it is not so dark. Uh, if the intensity of green and blue is uh, maybe 50 or maybe 10, uh, so perhaps the red color is a dark red color. Uh, okay, because sometimes the RGB, uh, the green and blue, Although they are not really contributing to the red color, but actually they are affecting the intensity. I mean, the overall exposure, light exposure as well. So if you have, you know, uh, R255, uh, but green and blue is uh, zero, zero, or perhaps your red color is not, not, not the bright color red, okay? But in fact, uh, if you have R is 255, but then the green and blue is 200 and 200, so perhaps your red color is a very bright red. Okay, because red, green, and blue all in two five five would have a white red a value, white color, and all in zero 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 would be the would be the uh, black color. Okay, and uh, uh, again, uh, please do not confuse RGB and CMY. Uh, and in our original model for CMY, you have CMY only. You don't have K. Uh, K is later on at it. And for RGB, zero 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 is represent black color, but this is inverse. I mean, uh, opposite for CMY, which means 000 is not black color in CMY, but white color. Okay, always remember this one. Uh. So, uh, number three, describe what is addit additive mixing and subtractive mixing in the image color production scheme. Name the color model which ap with application that applies re respective color mixing method. So this is, um, we have already learned about additive and subtractive mixing. Adjective, uh, additive is to add something out. Subtractive is subtract something from white color. So always remember, we only have um, one additive and one subtractive, which means RGB is for additive, 
CMR is for subtractive. Okay. Um, sometimes this is also called as color category. So if let's say, um, what I worry is that uh, sometimes people use different wording. Uh, you are not really uh, know. The question is actually asking additive and subtractive. Okay. If let's say uh, the question is asking something like you never learned before, either either way is that you never study else is that uh, it is referring part of it, but using different uh, keywords. For example, color model, color scheme, color space, all those are all those are um, interchangeable uh, synonym. Okay. So if let's say you only know color model. And when the question asks for color scheme, so you don't know what to answer. Okay, so please make sure um, you know. Lah. Okay, uh, the additive mixing is also part of the color category. Lah. Okay, so um, let us get a student to answer these questions. Let me take someone online. Uh. Wing Liang, Wing Liang Yong. Uh, I think you can share your screen or you can put it in the chat box because this one I think it's okay to copy paste. Uh. Are you there? One moment. Uh. Um, additive color mixing is a way of creating new color through the process of adding. Da, 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 da. Okay, how about subtract, subtractive? And don't, don't forget to uh, read the question carefully. Uh. I think the question did ask to provide application, right? So make sure you provide the application as well. Uh. Obtain the same amount of primary color. Amount of primary color. Specific amount of primary color. Three subjective. Cyan, magenta, yellow, cyan, white. Okay. Um, how about the applications? Okay, so um, I think this one I, I did repeat many times that uh, RGB is used in hardware application, any any digital monitor, uh, we are using uh, RGB and CMR is specifically used for uh, color printing, uh, color printing industry, of course, not only the limited to book, uh, printing t-shirt whatsoever, they are using CMY. Okay, thank you for your answer. Um, so additive mixing, uh, it involves light emitted directly from a source. So um, the, additive reproduction, the additive reproduction process use red, green, and blue to produce the color, the other color. Basically, the idea be, be behind the additive and subtractive is that additive is to add up red, green, and blue. But subtractive is to subtract red, green, and blue from white color, which means one, one, one. Uh, okay. So you have... You have something like this one, then one, 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 which means white color. Lah. So you subtract something else from your RGB. So you get your cyan, magenta, and yellow. Lah. Okay. So combining one of these additive primary color with another in equal amount produce the additive secondary color, which is cyan, magenta, and yellow. Combining all, combining all three primary color in equal intensity for you, the shade of gray. So basically, um, as you can observe in MATLAB, uh, the uh, gray skill, actually uh, MATLAB return you three value as well uh, in, in terms of RGB as well, but then the three value will be same, uh, the index is the same. So that is why um, actually the value uh, for RGB is, uh, for gray skill uh, is the same. Although um, we, don't, we don't really say that, uh, because the way MATLAB return to you, uh, um, it's not really a good point to discuss that. That is because this might be software dependence. Okay. But nonetheless, do you still oh, do you still remember this kind of graph? Uh, where you have red, green, blue, you know, a box. Uh, so whenever everything is one, uh, so you will get somewhere around here. Uh, yeah, so ugly. Uh. 
So when you get 1, 1, 1 now, so which means you have R is equal to 1, uh, B is equal to 1, and G is equal to 1, you get somewhere around here. So this is when this black color dot is white color. Lah, whenever everything is 1. So whenever everything is 0, uh, you, you will be somewhere around here, which is black color. Okay, And anything connect between these two lines, uh, uh, white and black color, so which means uh, the value of red, green, and blue is at the uh, same index, uh, so that the line will be moving. Uh, yeah. So that the line will be moving, uh, you know, when you have, uh, you can assume a uh, three dimension. So when you, when all this, these three value increasing proportionally, which means one, 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 two, 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 something like that. So you will create a straight line over there. So the straight line, whenever everything goes to one, you will get a white color, zero, you will get a black color. So everything uh, contribute in the same index, uh, red, green, and blue, you will get a gray scale. Okay. So this is also why MATLAB is returning three same, three same uh, index when you are, uh, you know, playing around with gray scale. And when you click on the pixel on each of the, I mean, a gray scale image. Uh, so that is the reason why MATLAB returning a gray, uh, a, a three index RGB, but in same value because of this reason. Uh, okay. So used in uh, color production of television projector and three color in additive mixing used in RG, used in RGB color space is red, green, and blue. Okay. So subtractive mixing, it is based on reflective color rather than emissive color. Reflective color, which means you, you subtract something else and reflect something. Okay. I think this definition would, would be already known to everyone uh, since from fourth physics. Okay. The, the, all those color that we see is the color uh, reflected. Okay. The rest of the color is being absorbed by this material. So basically in material design, uh, so if you want to create something with different color, I mean, display something with different color, you have to determine this material can absorb what color and, and, and can reflect what color. So the reflectance color would be the color that people can see, which is the color of the water. Okay. Basically this color, the orange is not the color of this. Orange is, uh, for example, I have a, uh, water in orange. So orange is not the color of this water, but instead orange is the color did not absorb by the water itself. Okay. So um, this should be uh, the correct uh, way to explain it. So it generates color by mixing secondary color, which is which includes the cyan, magenta, and yellow. So basically RGB is the primary color and the CMY is the secondary color. So the color that, uh, that an object appear to have is based on what part of spectrum are reflected by it or conversely by what part of spectrum are not absorbed okay so it's the same now so uh, what is absorbed uh, the rest is what is not absorbed okay so color are produced by making use of ink pigment for properly in absorbing certain color use the color production for printed work so printed work and three color subtractive mixing in cmi uh, model would be uh, the cyan, magenta, and yellow. Lah. Mm. So name the color pop popularity used in PC model. Uh, this one, I know it. You all will give answer. Um, basically, it's very simple. Lah. PC model would be uh, RGB. Uh, color printing would be CMY. And color TV broadcast will be uh, YIQ, YUV color model. For color broadcast, uh, we will learn it later on, especially in the video processing. Uh, they are using YIQ and YUV. Um, this is not up to the people uh, say that I want to use RGB or what whatsoever, uh, because this is usually determined by a group of expert people, which uh, also define the standard. Uh. For example, standard in Asian, standard in Europe will be different because this is dealing with the uh, uh, satellite as well. So not, not, not something that we, I want so I can, okay? It is because uh, the best to display the color uh, broad TV program would be by IQ and by UE. But somehow the YUV by IQ is more or less the same as the RGB. Uh, because the, uh, still remember HUV, uh, HSI, all those models. Uh, the model is like a diamond shape, right? The model is like a diamond shape. model is like a diamond shape or maybe some is in a cone shape but nonetheless uh, uh, the, the way the way this uh, being uh, expressed the way this being expressed in the 
uh, YUV, HSI, all, all are very similar, whereby you have luminous and chrominant channel. We will learn about luminous and chrominant channel later on, and human eye is more sensitive towards part of the channel, not all. So that is why uh, we use well, YIQ, YUE, YCBCM. There is some reason over there. I always would say that the, 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 the way, I mean, the color model that you choose to use uh, is actually um, depends on your application. There is no such thing uh, would be um, the best color channel, no such thing that's best color channel. So I would say the uh, best fit, but not the best channel over other. It depends on the application. Okay. So what IQ, YUV is part of it, uh, which is best for the uh, TV, uh, color TV broadcast. Lah. Okay. So um, let me see. See. Color inject printer use CMY model when the cyan ink color is sprayed on a sh shade of white paper. Why does this look cyan under light daylight? What color would it appear under a blue light? Why? Okay. Why does it look cyan under daylight? Why? What color would it appear under blue? Like, oh, oh okay, weird. Okay, so this question is asking, uh, you know, play around with the CMY and RGB color model. Uh. So, uh, when a cyan ink is sprayed on a sheet of white paper, so basically, you, you, you see, uh, it is trying to uh, subtract something from something else, uh, which is white paper. Uh. Okay, um, why does it look cyan under the lamp? The first question A is to ask you to justify uh, why you can see some color, a uh, cyan color. But for B, um, the color would appear in the, uh, this is the B, uh, um, for, some, for some conditions, not always, not always that um, the color appear to, I mean, the way the color uh, display is the same. For example, uh, you know, you have sort of, um, reflective UV light, uh, you know, uh, when you, how should I put it? Uh, um, when you see this bottle, if it is in orange color, for now, under normal sunlight or normal ambient light, it looks like an orange color. But in some other, uh, but let's say the ambient light change to maybe orange light as well. Uh, so the orange color bottle may not remain as the same color as it is. The pixel is called, uh, I mean, then, I mean, the bottle is, did, not, did not change the color itself, but rather it's because the change of color model here, I mean, minusing this and that. So what we can see from, is affected by all this R R R RGB and CMI from the ambient environment. So that is why we might see something change in color, but in fact, it is due to some of the, um, like, for example, you have an A color, but this A color may not look the same when it's under different ambient light. Okay, so for the first answer, sometimes I, I wish to ask you all to answer, but then if you all answer, so those from online cannot see the answer. Very difficult. Okay, it's okay. Um, maybe uh, question five, I will let those uh, in physical class to answer. So anyone to answer question five? I will show the answer later on uh, uh, via my, uh, my, my share screen. So anyone to answer question, question five? Yeah, uh, you can. I'm not sure you have marker or what. Yeah, please. One moment, uh, if you want to share screen. Let me stop sharing. Okay, you may share whenever you're ready. Oh, I think this projector is not so nice. Uh. The one over there is better. I think this one is a bit blur and also the intensity is not strong enough. But anyway, how I can view over here. Um, let me put in the spotlight. Uh. Okay, the color seen by the eye depends on the light reflect from the object. When cyan ink color is sprayed on the 
shade of white paper, cyan color absorb the red color from the daylight and see and white red, okay. And reflect green and blue, green and blue. So green and blue mix together to become produce cyan, okay. So RGB, so red, green, blue absorb C and white cyan. Okay. So for the B, uh, can you scroll up a bit? Okay. The cyan color will not absorb the blue color from blue light. So the cyan color will not absorb the blue color from the blue light. So only blue color will left in the light and reflect the human eye. Hence, blue color will appear under a blue light. This, uh, let me rethink. RGB 001. One zero zero. Okay, so your first answer is that uh, cyan will absorb red, so remain uh, G and B, and G and B mix to cup together and form a cyan color. Okay, so for B card B, you say that uh, the color will remain as blue, right? Okay, okay. Thank you for your shared answer. So let me share my screen. Uh, you should unshare your screen first. <laughs> okay. So let me share my screen. Uh. Sometimes uh, all these questions uh, are quite simple, uh, but it, it requires time for you to think. So uh, I would suggest you, uh, if in examination, all this kind of question appear, please do this question first. If uh, last minute, uh, uh, when Kalam Kabut, uh, I don't think you can think anymore. Uh, okay, It is not like you know, one plus one is equal to two. Uh, so you cannot, when you when the time stuff is quite difficult for people to think. Uh, okay. <clears throat> So for cyan color, uh, for, for A, uh, for cyan color, uh, the CMY coordinate is 100. Zero, zero. So cyan, right? So one, uh, no magenta, no yellow, so zero, 00. The color seen by the eye depends on the light that is reflected from the object. So the cyan ink absorb red light from the incoming light, um, which is same with uh, the answer provided, and reflect the green and blue light. When green and blue light are mixed, they appear uh, to the eye as a cyan according to the trichronomacy uh, messy theory. So this is the CMY. Uh, during, the, I mean, whenever you involve CMY, uh, we always have a white color light, a white color uh, source, la, because CMY is always subtractive. Man. You need to subtract something from uh, CMY from something else. So 101, so since, and then minus RGB, you get CMY. La. So, uh, so in order to get the RGB value, uh, so 101 minus CMY, so since you have this one, like, 100, zero, zero, so you get 011. One, one, uh. So the RGB code for the um, representing the cyan is 011. Uh, uh, one, uh. Okay. So for B, what color would appear under a, a blue light? Why? Since application applicable for viewing the CMY ink under white light. Okay. The cyan ink does not, do, does not absorb the blue, and the blue is the only color left. Why exactly the same? Uh? Is it answer? How come? Uh? Even the answer is exactly the same. Did oh, I release? Oh, is it? Or oh, oh, this is in the lecture notes? Uh? Yes. Oh, is it? Uh? Okay, okay. Ah, yeah. Okay. No wonder uh, the, the question, the answer is exactly the same. Uh? Okay. Uh, please, uh, in your assignment and so lab, uh, make sure you don't have a similar answer, you know. You know when I read the first uh, answer sheet and then followed by second, mm, everything is the same. Uh. Algorithm is okay, like, acceptable, like, but not the like, justification, like, okay? The cyan ink does not absorb blue, and the blue is the only uh, color left in the light that is reflected by the eye of the of human observer. So the cyan ink will appear to the eye as blue, like, uh, very direct. Uh. When the ink absorbs a blue color from incoming white light, it basically means that the ink poses the property to absorb or to reduce the strength. Not all the time, uh, uh, for example, you have 
uh, this is a very um, good point. Uh, because sometimes uh, whenever you have cyan color, not a must you, you know, uh, for, for example, the first question, even though you have a cyan color, in, in so-called the uh, ideal con, uh, case that you would able to see a pure cyan because we use, always using one to represent present, zero represent absent, right? So, but in real case, uh, in practical case, uh, we don't really have a pure color. So it's not so possible that, you know, when you, when, once you spray a, a, a layer of cyan on a white paper, so you directly can see a very obvious cyan, but instead the cyan might be very low intensity, you know, red, there is a lot of red, you know, maroon, black, uh, dark red and dull red and etc. So this is, uh, but nonetheless, uh, in, in theory, la, we are discussing, is there any red color? That's all. Okay. So, 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 so uh, sometimes the spray may not be absorbed directly or absorbed uh, all, all together. It might still present, but with reduced strength. Okay. This one is important uh, because um, uh, try not to learn everything in ideal conditions. Uh, we have to know what is practical as well. Uh, okay. Of color length that correspond to the blue color. Okay. So this is um, simple as all. Okay, question six. Determine the, col determine the color of emergent light as observed by the human observer in figure two, based on the following combination of layer one and layer two ink. So you have this combination, uh, um, yellow ink, magenta ink, and white paper uh, incident, okay. So, um, okay, so basically just asking what is the emergent light over here, okay. So, um, let me pick someone from online. Xue Wen. Xue Wen Pang. Pang, is it correct? Mm. I think this one you may need to, yeah, you can put your answer in the chat box as well. I think this one is okay. This is just to determine and also, whenever the question asks for determine the color, please don't just keep it, always remember because in examination you have uh, marks just beside the uh, questions. Uh. So if uh, the question asks for determine and only two marks, so of course you can just keep the color. Uh. Uh, but if the question is like four marks, so please give the justification alongside. Uh. Okay, one zero zero red color. Okay, uh, but in the uh, I mean during during the examination, uh, if it is more than one or two marks, uh, so basically you need to give justification. Uh, I mean how you deduce the red color. Okay, so let me thank you for your answer. So the answer is correct lah. So for yellow uh, color ink on layer one and magenta ink on layer two, uh, uh, another thing is that uh, after you explain this one, uh, it's good for you to give me this one, okay? This one is important, uh. okay? So for yellow color ink uh, on layer one and magenta ink on layer two, the CMY coordinate is 0, 1, 1, uh, okay? So the color seen by the eye depends on the light that is reflected from the object. Magenta ink absorbs green light from the uh, incoming uh, daylight, while the yellow absorb the blue light, thus re only red color reflect, la, which means you have this uh, uh, absorb uh, green light and blue light, so uh, left only red color light. La. So the reflected red light appears to eye as green color <clears throat> according to the trigonometry uh, theory. So this is it. So 111 RGB. So you have CMY. So since you have 011 uh, according to this one, uh, because you have yellow and magenta ink, so you will get 100. So 100 in RGB is red color. Okay, so this is quite simple, uh, but you have to think. Uh, okay, and um, I'm okay if you give me the answer in point form. Uh, um, I would prefer as well. As well uh, it's better for me to uh, get the point. Uh, okay, so if you want to uh, give me in paragraph as well, uh, it's okay. But make sure, uh, although, although there is no marks for grammar, uh, Typo, uh, all those are acceptable. I mean, no mark given when you're spelling, wrong spelling, but please, at least your sentence is understandable. Uh. Because some people, uh, I'm not really sure uh, they can write something. Uh, 
I cannot comprehend as well at all. I, I don't understand why. Uh, but I think most of you can do okay. La. Okay. I found that the students here in Thai, you see, uh, their English is quite good. Um, not sure, because last time back to uh, government U, uh, perhaps some university, um, the English competency is not that good. La. Okay. So it's sometimes very difficult to understand. But I think quite rare here is good. Okay. Maybe because uh, over here is KL. Uh, not sure. So uh, number seven, let me see. Uh, number seven, I can uh, describe this. I can present the answer. So describe the following color related attributes. Color is a sensation perceived by the brain when EM wave, uh, electromagnetic wave, uh, uh, consists of various wavelengths simu simulating the eye. So as I as we learned before, uh, we have uh, rod and cone cell right in our retina. So different cells in of course uh, this is not in the examination uh, because this is not biology uh, anyway. So but you have to know actually uh, how we perceive color uh, by the human eye. Okay. For luminance, brightness of the light depends on the energy of luminous brightness of the light and dependence on the energy of light. Energy of light, which means uh, is this uh, picture bright enough or very dark in overall? So this is more related to exposure, la. um, the white balance, uh, the white balance of the the white balance of the uh, uh, image. Hue, perceived color level based on the dominant wavelength of in the light. HSV uh, is actually um, H. Uh, I, ho I hope you all can recall uh, HSV is the color cone, something like this one, right? And uh, HSI as well. So uh, it is more or less the same, uh, uh, HSV and HSI. And S and V or S and I is more on saturation and uh, intensity. The intensity here is not the intensity like 0 to 255, uh, but intensity like very dark or very bright color this is so-called the intensity okay uh, like you know something very soft but something very um, dominant those are called intensity okay and the uh, uh hsv the, uh, the 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 s is more on saturation which means you have a very saturated for example it's red color uh, is it very saturated red color or very unsaturated red color if it is a very saturated red color which means the red color is very bright red, la, very maroon. La. So if it is unsaturated, so it is more, you know, look like a red color, but in front of a red color is, is uh, dilute with a layer of white color, something like that. So your red color is it looks like more like a pink color and etc. Okay. So when you, uh, for the hue, hue level, hue level is actually extending uh, in a degree. La. Uh, I hope you all still can recall uh, in a degree in 360. So in different degree, you have different color. Uh, and of course, this is a little bit different from RGB. Uh, because the H itself will describe all the red, green, and blue by determining, by changing the degree. La. Okay, 0 to 360. And the saturation is towards outside. Okay. So uh, if it is at the center, so which means it's very, uh, very dark color. Uh, I mean, uh, black in color. La. So when the arrow or the vector extend upwards uh, to the to the uh, boundary, so which means it is more and more saturated. And for the intensity, it is upward and downward. So for downward would be uh, black in color uh, because none, no intensity. For upward would be white in color. Okay. So this is um, HSV. Uh, so which means when you uh, describe H, uh, H is actually describe the color in the dominant wavelength, which means by H alone, you can actually determine um, this HSV or HSI is actually from which color domain. For example, you have um, H, which is fall within the red color um, degree. Uh, so which means this is a red color, but you need to check on the S and V or S and I to see if this red color is very saturated or unsaturated, uh, very, uh, um, high intensity, which means uh, a bit bright in color, or it is very less in intensity, which is very dull or very dark in color. Okay, so always remember to do so. And with different color model, you have to think in a different way. Okay, and saturation. 
um, when the light is uh, composed of many different wavelengths, it is con considered as less uh, saturated light. Okay, uh, less saturated, less saturated, which means unsaturated, uh, which means your um, um, how do I say? It? Um, if you have a bottle with oil inside, uh, so the oil is very saturated. But if the bottle inside you have oil, water, uh, maybe some other um, liquid like 100 plus or whatsoever. So which means the bottle inside is not saturated by a single component. So saturated is that this um, inside a specific container or this specific color model, the red color is in is the, the only component inside, like the only color component inside. Okay. Prominence. The signal used in the video system to convey the color information of the picture separately from the uh, accom accompanying, what is it? Luminance signal. Prominence is usually represented as two color difference components. So U is, uh, always remember if you have prime, uh, which means this is normalized. Uh, okay. Especially in chapter, I, I forgot chapter, which chapter is it? But uh, some chapter when you convert uh, YCBCR, uh, to maybe a, a specific channel, uh, you would found that there is a prime sign over there. Uh. So the prime sign is uh, referring to uh, <clears throat> normalized value, uh, which means not zero to two five five, but zero to one. Uh. So always remember to normalize it first. <clears throat> if you encounter this prime uh, uh, symbol, uh, okay. If not, uh, uh, you will get a very weird answer for sure. Okay. <clears throat> So chrominance uh, is usually represented as a two color difference component. U is equal to uh, B prime minus Y Y prime, which is blue luminance. And V is equal to R uh, red luminance, uh, R prime uh, minus Y Y prime. Okay, this one, uh, let, uh, let me finish it. Lah. So state the color scheme that used to represent the, this one nothing much to, um, to discuss uh, because you just state right. So why I why UV by IQ and digital TV would be this one. Uh. Um, let me think. Uh. Um, if we have a uh, subjective question, so perhaps we have this one. Uh. But if we don't have no no objective question, maybe we have this one. Uh. But I don't think no, we don't have objective question. So uh uh it's okay this one. Just for information. Okay. Yes. Uh, until transition four only, yeah. Seriously, yeah. Hey, is it uh, okay? Oh, tutorial two until until question four only, yeah. I thought finished already, yeah. Uh. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> question four. Uh. Is question four finished? Yes. Ah. Uh. Five done or so, uh. Oh, okay, six. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Why you never <laughs> let me know? Uh? Okay. Uh, we still got time. Uh, maybe we can look into uh, this uh, tutorial tool. Uh. Okay. So we look into tutorial two. Mm, screen resolution uh, and printing resolution. Anyone to share the answer? We... We look into this one, uh, question six, uh, and then we uh, finish. Uh. So next time we start uh, with uh, question seven. Uh. Okay. So anyone to share your answer? Let me choose someone from online. Uh. Xin Shen Tan. If you want to share screen, please let me know. Or you can just copy and paste, put it in the chat box. Are you there? Mm, it's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, question six. Tutorial two. Question six. Oh. 
Okay, size is determined by three factors, namely the, 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 the PPI. The more the PPI on the screen, the finer the detail. This is screen resolution. Okay, how about the next one? The next one is printing resolution. Dot per PPI is used to measure the printer resolution. The higher the okay. Let me share my screen now. Thank you for your answer. Okay, compare and contrast. Uh, uh, if the if let's say the question uh, did ask for compare, you can put it in this table. Okay, else you want to put it, you know, uh, uh, screen resolution, bullet point, followed by printing resolution, bullet point is fine as well. Okay, when the digital image is displayed on a computer screen, so the size is determined by three factors. So this one is in the previous one as well. Uh -huh. Screen resolution, screen size, and number of pixels. So screen or monitor resolution, PPI, is measure of how many pixels are displayed per inch on the screen. So the more the pixel uh, per inch or, or the PPI on the screen, the finer the details and hence the better the image quality. Um, on Which means, uh, so that is why when you have a, a HD video, uh, the resolution is greater. Okay, the resolution is greater. When the resolution is greater, which means you have more pixels to display in a single screen. Uh, so on any given monitor, changing screen resolution change the number and size of the pixel used to display the object, such an icon, text button, and images. So that is why sometimes when you have safe mode, especially the resolution is will be changed dramatically. Where, where, where but in your safe mode of your computer, the icon is very big, right? Because uh, you have a different uh, size of pixel to display. So that would be the um, best or the safest. Uh, safest uh, mode for the computer to display. So that is why uh, when you're in a safe mode, you will find that, oh, why the uh, all this icon is become very, very big, something like that. Because the uh, change, because that is because the change of the size of pixel. Screen and monitor resolution is measured in proportion standard or of width, uh, which is horizontal, and height, which is vertical. So DPI, DPI is for printing only. Uh. Um, is a measurement of printer resolution that defines how many dots of ink are placed on the page when the image is printed, used by, used by the printer to describe spacing between the pixel and the pixel are printed out, when the pixel are printed out. So the higher the printing resolution, the better is the image quality. So basically, in most of the printing industry, uh, the minimum requirement is 300 dpi. 300, okay? If you have less than 300, so maybe the resolution will be very... Uh, bad, uh, okay, especially during after print out. Uh. So, uh, especially for submit for conference or submit for any journal, uh, the minimum is 300. Uh, I don't think some, some maybe request uh, greater than 300, but quite rare. Uh. Usually 300 is sufficient. So in this study, the image size, the image size are, are described in pixel and photographic prints in inch. Okay, so that's all. Uh, both uh, DPI and PPI are both measured in inch. Uh, okay, okay. So I think that's all for today. So we will continue question seven next tutorial. Uh, a warm reminder, uh, next week, uh, uh, Tuesday, we have our practical and also um, lecturer class uh, online only, uh, online only. Uh. I will post a reminder uh, maybe on Monday. Uh, and for next week, we have, we don't have, uh, tut uh, we don't have tutorial class. And for next week class, I mean the Thursday one hour class, we already replace uh, replaced uh, during last Thursday. Uh, okay, so next Thursday, we don't have any class. And next Tuesday, we have online class, practical and lecture. Okay, thank you everyone and bye-bye.